Sweet, it's working. I'm a namaste guys, Christian R. Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, wishing you a big and beautiful shout out on this Tuesday evening, or, you know, some other time that you're, you're uh, logging into this, this live stream. <clears throat> so I wanted to jump on and talk about a vision that I had as a 15 year old kid that as I'm meditating on it, it came to me last night, I was like, oh, that would be kind of a cool, hey, what's up? It'd be kind of a cool live stream to talk about and I never even thought about doing it or, or talking about it until now. And I've done, at this point, we've done over 300 hours of live streams on Periscope, YouTube, Facebook, um, probably some other venues at some other point in time. And I don't know when you were 15 years old, what kind of vision you had for your life or your purpose on, or what you wanted to do. Mini, I'm a namaste. But something occurred to me when I was 15 years old, I was sitting in my room. Um, I lived with my dad at the time in Berlin, Massachusetts, and we were in a base, I was in the basement. I guess it was kind of actually on the ground floor, so there were f three floors, but it seemed like the basement. It was always cold in that room. And I remember I'd always been very interested in martial arts, health and fitness, and so I sat down in this super old computer. I don't even remember who I got it from or where I got it from. It's like where the lettering was actually green. It was so old, like DOS or something. Hey, Sharon, I have a namaste. So I sat down and I started typing out um, fitness plans <clears throat> and fitness routines for people who might be interested in improving their physical health and their physical vitality. And then I printed them out on one of those super, super old printers. Do you know the kind that is just like, <laughs> And it has like that rolling paper and it, it takes, I don't know, maybe maybe five minutes to print out one page. And so these little manuals that I put together were probably 15 or 20 pages long. It covered uh, physical fitness routines for the entire body and then it covered nutrition routines, which I wasn't a certified nutritionist. Keep in mind, 15 years old, the only experience that I had with fitness and nutrition was on my own physical body, and here I am, the expert that's uh, printing out these routines. And so I was gonna sell them door to door in my neighborhood for like $30 a piece. And my body was terrified of like, what if I get rejected? What if nobody cares? Like I had just printed them out, shoved them in a manila envelope, I stacked them all together and I said, Okay, if I sell all of these, then I'm gonna make like like a hundred dollars. And a hundred dollars twenty-two years ago as a fifteen year old kid is like a million dollars, right? And so what do you think happened? After everything was said and done, I went through hours and hours and hours of effort, which was enjoyable effort by the way. I thoroughly enjoyed designing these routines, printing them out packaging them properly, having a little introduction and a little closing statements. I really, really enjoyed the process. Guess how many I sold? Zero. <laughs> Zero. I didn't sell any of them because I was too afraid to go door to door in my neighborhood for fear of rejection. And then when I went to school, I was like, oh, this person would probably be interested in, in buying a fitness routine. Ah, oh, no, wait a minute. They, who would be interested? So there was all this doubt and lack and fear around asking in the marketplace for value. So when I was 15 years old, I did that. And right around the same time, I had this vision. I had this vision. I go, wouldn't it be cool if I bought a warehouse? And you're like, well, Christian, why would you buy a warehouse? And what kind of 15-year-old owns a warehouse in Massachusetts? And my idea was to buy a warehouse that was two stories and to have a group of 15 to 20 people living, what's up Eric, Atma Namaste, living in this warehouse for 365 days. Now you're like, well what are 15 to 20 people are gonna be doing in a warehouse together for 365 days? And my big idea, my big plan was to help that group of people improve the quality of their lives and their, physic their physical lives, their physical health, their emotional lives with their relationships, their mental lives with learning ability, accelerated learning techniques, 
in their spiritual lives. Now keep in mind, I was 15 years old. I hadn't mastered my own emotional state. I hadn't mastered the accelerated learning techniques that I was interested in sharing with other people. And I didn't even have a meditation practice. But a seed was planted inside of me during that time of my life that obviously look at what happened over a 22 year period of 18 years of meditation, 3,000 plus hours of meditation and healing retreats around the world, becoming a professional energy healer over the past 13 years. So that little tiny seed that was planted inside of me germinated over a period of years and now, da 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 da, super, super grateful for all the blessings that I've received within pranic healing or hatha yoga and the higher teachings of Grandmaster Chola Kuk Sui. So I remember hearing one of the pranic healing masters make a statement on this in a video that he says, these techniques that I'm sharing with you, Amy, Abba Namaste, these techniques that I'm sharing with you have been tried and, tri tried and tested in my life and the lives of a group of people over a period of 25 years. So it's not like one day this master sat down and says, you know, I have this amazing healing technique and I'm just, I'm gonna practice it on a couple people or this meditation technique, I'm gonna practice it a, a couple times and then I'm gonna open it up to the world, right? He had been taking certain healing techniques and certain meditation techniques and practicing them regularly for a period of 25 years before he felt that he was capable enough of, re of releasing it to the quote unquote pranic healing family and pranic healing community. So I sense from my youth as a 15 year old, there wasn't a lot of humility. There was really jumping the gun because who was I? Hey Scott, up and namaste. Who was I to be telling adults, this is how you take care of your physical body. This is how you take care of your emotions and your relationships with other people. This is how you increase your learning capacity and potentiality. This is how you uh, have a meditation practice to achieve deep inner peace and stillness, right? I was not qualified. I was not even close to being qualified. But with the blessings of Grandmaster Cho Kuksui, I was given tools, given techniques, given teachings that are, have been tried and tested many, many times through all kinds of scenarios and people over tw at least 25 years, and I've been able to share those teachings and those tools and those techniques with other people. That's why whenever you guys hear me talk about Master Choa, I'm talking about Master Choa because he's the one that I got all the information from. He's the one that I'm giving all the credit to. I don't take any credit for developing pranic healing. And there's a beautiful book that I highly recommend picking up if you're interested in understanding pranic healing on a much deeper level. So this book is one of the sutra books, Golden Lotus Sutra books that Master Choa had compiled in his lifetime. And there's eight of them, I believe. And this book is called Possible Miracles. See right here, Possible Miracles. So you can go to Amazon, type it in, Possible Miracles by Grand Master Choa. You can go to US Pranic Healing and go to the bookstore and you can find the book here. But within this book, it gives you the it gives you the outline of pranic healing and how pranic healing has helped many, many people and how Master Choa was able to take the healing arts, which is, healing has been an art form for thousands of years, and he codified it into a science that is duplicatable and replicatable with the person who, who can follow simple instructions. So extremely, extremely, extremely powerful. And we're extremely grateful for the tremendous sacrifice that he did with his personal life, his family life, his business life in order to get these teachings out to as many people as possible. So me, as a teacher within Pranic Healing, and as an instructor leader in Pranic Healing, and a full-time healer, it's my objective to spread Master Choa's teaching. So I'll give you, I'll give you guys an, uh, an example. So this is a big one that I see time and time and time again within the realm of energy healing and spiritual practices is that a lot of individuals don't think that there's such a thing as disease contaminated energy. They don't think there's such a thing as disease contaminated energy and that's simply not so. 
because the disease contaminated energy is simply the byproduct of fresh energy that's been consumed and then and then the the byproduct is the disease energy same same way as like if you were to take a piece of food like an apple you cut up the apple you consume the apple your body's going to extract the minerals the vitamins the nutrients out of the apple and then the byproduct of that process is pee and poop those are the byproducts and you say well that's not contamination well what is it it is a byproduct when you inhale oxygen the byproduct is carbon carbon dioxide right carbon dioxide help me out guys carbon dioxide not carbon monoxide that's poisonous that will kill you carbon dioxide right which the trees absorb that byproduct right and it's good for them wonderful filtration system so one of the principles of pranic healing so this book has the principles of pranic healing contained within it disease energy is transmissible it could be transmitted from a patient to another person or to a healer so one form of contaminated energy would be anger so let's say I as the healer co2 thanks Minnie let's say I as the healer am having a really bad really stressful day and my body is my emotional body is angry my emotions are angry do you feel on some level of me working with a patient or working with a client or transferring some of my energy some of my prana to them in that healing exchange is it possible that that person could pick up the feelings of anger it's possible right and most likely probable how many of us have hung out with a friend or a family member who we feel in that moment we're having a great day but they're having a really really bad day and we pick up on that vibe and we pick up on those energies it's transmissible it goes from one person to another person so if we can transfer anger energy back and forth to each other what about other higher vibrational energies like transferring love back to each other transferring inner peace back to each other transferring wisdom and clarity back and forth to each other right so that's called the principle of contamination the disease energy of a subject could contaminate a person an object an animal or a plant therefore to avoid contamination is it extremely important for healers to flick their hands when sweeping and after energizing and to wash their hands and arms after cleansing and energizing so what does that mean flick so in pranic healing we work on a principle called energetic hygiene or keeping ourselves energetically clean keeping the patient energetically clean and keeping the environment energetically clean so part of that is as we're taking off disease congested stress energy or anger energy or um, depression energy off of the patient now some of it's left in our hand so we have a salt bowl or a salt basin next to us that we flick that disease congested energy to and now the energy is in the salt water versus being on the person's hand um, and it's also important to do that after energizing so the two main principles of pranic healing is cleansing we're removing congestion we're removing stress energy we're removing anger we're removing depression we're removing limiting beliefs negative thoughts whatever the energy we're removing and then we energize with the opposite positive quality like inner peace happiness joy love clarity wisdom understanding passion right but in the process of energizing the client some of the person's congested energy can also be coming to us and be absorbed by us so that's why at the end of a healing session we want to take salt water and cleanse our hands all the way up to the elbows so this is something that in my experience I've not seen in any other energy healing modality is called energetic hygiene energetic hygiene of cleansing the disease congested energy around us so salt water has a tendency to pull energy salt has the quality of breaking up disease congested energy so if you look at salt water clairvoyantly it's green in color which has the properties of breaking something up right that's how it works so that's why energetic hygiene is super super important if you are going to be a regular healer because if you heal person after person after person after person after person and you don't keep yourself energetically clean 
you could be taking on the negative